Hi and welcome to part 2 of this Django crash course. Today we're going to create a new Django app and show a front page. I'm also going to explain a little bit how Django works and what views we're going to use and similar. But first I want to create a core app for the front page and the about page. So let's go to the editor or the command line where you have that running and stop the web server. First to create the Django app you say python manage.py start app and then the name of the app which in our case will be core great so now we got a new folder here a django app is a collection of views models tests and similar and for example this core app will contain the front page about page and similar we will also have one app for posts where we describe to django what type of information we want to store about the posts comments and similar it will make more sense when we start adding data to these files. Our Django project is called CrashBlog and a Django project usually consists of many Django apps. Great, great. But even though we have created the app, Django actually doesn't know that this exists. So we need to go into settings.py and find a list here called installed apps. Django comes with a few built-ins. For example, the Django admin area is this one. And then at the end here we add core.apps.coreconfig core is the name of the app apps is the file inside there called apps.py and coreconfig is the name of the class here so this will now be the namespace or core is the namespace but this is how you configure it so now Django knows that this app exists and then inside this core folder, we have a migrations folder which contains information about the database. You have the init.py which is making this folder a package. The admin.py where you can register database models with the admin interface. Apps.py which is configuration for this specific app. Models.py is where you create models, for example, post which contains a title, uh, an intro and a body and similar tests.py is for running tests on this app and views.py is for example the front page view where we tell Django where to look for the templates and similar let's create a base template so I can show you how this actually works inside the core folder create a new folder called templates and Django will automatically look for a folder called the templates inside all of the apps we have. And then in here, we create one more folder called core. And then in there, called base.html. So then here I add the doc type HTML, HTML, the head, the title, crash blog, and then the body, h1, hello and save. And then to show the front page we go to views.py to create a view here. Let me say def front page and then we pass in something called a request. This is information about the URL you're on, the browser and much more information. And then to show the base.html file we say return render request. We pass in the request and then render is a function or shortcut from Django to render HTML and show it on the screen. Now we pass in core slash base.html which is the template we just created. And this core is the name of the folder inside the templates folder. Great. So now we can import this view into crashblog slash urls.py from core dot views import front page now we append it to the list of url pattern by saying path make this empty since this is the front page and now we pass in front page which is the view and we give this a name of front page so it's easy to access this from other places so if i now go down here and start the web server run server go to the browser refresh we now see the hello from the base.html file perfect so then i want to go back to views.py and just explain that this is now a function based view but django also comes with something called a class based view 
Class-based views can be very useful because they give a lot of functionality with a little amount of code. But function-based views is my favorite. Class-based views can be a little bit hard to understand at first because so much are happening without adding code for it. So it's not easy to understand why things happen. So it's easier to use the function-based views. Great, so now just add, I want to add some more information to the front page. But it's not smart to keep using this page base.html for the front page. I want to create a separate template for the front page. Front page.html. And I want this to extend this template. So instead of adding this in all of the templates, I want to make sure that information I add in the front page.html comes here in the body. And to do that, we need to add something called a block content and then end the block to stop it and then content is a name you can call it whatever you want but content makes sense and then to extend this template we go to front page.html and here we say extends core slash base.html and then to pass information into here we use the same block content here as well. H1 front page. And we can close it and block. And then I just need to go into views.py and rename base.html here to front page. And save. So if I now refresh, you will see the front page. And if I inspect this, you will see that here we still get the HTML head and similar. And this is because you are extending that template. And we can also get one more block title up here. Block title. And block. And keep no space here. So now I can copy this block here. Put it at the top here. And say home and pipe and space. So now you use two block to co put information there. So now we have a custom title up here as well. Home pipe crash blog. So just to make sure that you understand how this works, you can create one more page called about def about request return render request core slash about dot html. This will be an about page for the blog. So then in the core folder here, create one more file called about.html. And then extends core slash base.html. Oops. And then the block title about pipe space and block. This could be a hyphen if you wanted to do that, or similar, but I like the, how this looks in the browser. And then block content, h1 about, and block, save. And then I just need to import this to the URLs file. So append about at the end there. And then above the front page, we say path about, slash pass in the name of the view and name is about and the way python or django reads this is from the top and down so it will start at the top and then now django knows that the mm, the part we are on should be for example slash about and then it takes this name starts at the top and just reads down until it finds something it matches on here and then it will find the about function view and render it, which it gets the template and then show it to the user here. Great. So now we have an about page as well. So the way everything here works now is that when we go to an address, the web server down here will call manage.py, which will find that here we're going to use the settings file, which goes to here. And then the settings file are going to use this root URL configuration, crashblog.urls, and it goes in here, and then it goes down into the URL patterns, 
find the about path there, call this view, and then it goes into views.py where you find this function, which calls the render function, which finds this template, which is this one, and then it's being shown here to the user. Great. So now I just want to customize the base.html a little bit and I want to get some information from this template. So if I just go to the page source, I'm going to copy a few things here. First, I can take these three meta tags, paste them at the top of the head like that. This is just char set for foreign keys and similar. This line will make it uh, mobile friendly or make it possible to have it mobile friendly and this is just some meta tags for Internet Explorer and Edge. And then I want to copy this which is the URL for Bulma. Remove that slash, I don't like that. I can use version 0 0.9.2 and I can copy this style tag and paste it there. Great, so now the styling should be okay. So if I save now, go back and refresh, you'll see that something changed here. That is because Bulma was activated. Perfect. So then I want to copy the navigation bar. So if I scroll down, you see here, start nav. So I will copy this. And then go back to the editor and above this block content, I paste this. There, I just wanted to clean it a little bit so it, it has the correct indentation. And I do not have this logo here, so I want to just remove this and say strong crash blog instead. So I have information or the title there. And the href can go to slash, which will be the front page. So here you have a nav bar which will give us this up here. You have the container, so it's not going to fill out the whole screen, but it stops here. And then the nav bar brand is this one, the logo. And then first you have the name of the blog, and then you have the burger which will show on smaller screens like here. And then we have a menu, and we want this to be placed at the end, so it's on the right side of the screen. In here we have a navbar item, which is the it has icon left and similar, and this is the search you can see here. And then you have a input is surrounded, is this one, which is the search. I see that this is type email and that is not correct. It should be type text. And then you have three buttons or links in the menu as well. And it's important to have this navbar item. Is active will be this one, which is the front page. Is size 5 is the text size. And then you set it to be semi bold. But as you can see here, we use a search icon. So I need to include font awesome as well. And I forgot to do that, but I see that it is here. So I just need to copy these two lines. Go back, scroll up, and then below the Bulma script, you can paste it there, like that. So now we can save this, go back to the crash blog, refresh, and now we also have the menu here. Perfect. And then the next step now is to add some space above and below this here. So go back to the code, into base.html, find this block content. To give this space, we add a section, class, oops, section, class, section and then we just close it below this like that so save refresh and now we have some space there perfect and we can also add a div class container just to keep it from going too wide like that so now it follows the same width as up here perfect and then the last thing I'm going to add is the footer down there. So just scroll down, 
find the footer, so it's footer class footer. This will go below the section. And the div class content has text centered. And then a P. And then I just say copyright C 2021 20, crash blog and save. If you now go back, refresh, we get the gray footer here with the text centered. Perfect. So now we have the design almost finished, at least for the menu and here. Still need to add function or data here, but that will come in the next part. If you have any questions about today's code, feel free to leave a comment below and answer as soon as I can. See you in the next video.